Magic. So yeah, so let's start off with just a quick glance at the market. I'm going to do a little bit of a refresh, you know, with crypto, how it goes. Every few seconds it changes. So over here, pretty much we're in stable territory yet again. It's kind of funny how we had a $100 million kind of buy order into Bitcoin and it sent everything flying up. So we still have Bitcoin above 5,000, which is pretty awesome. Yesterday, we were talking a little bit with Arcane Bear and he's he's actually feeling a little bit bearish. He feels like the, the ties haven't changed completely yet. Right now, it seems like we are coalescing to a point and it could break up or down. So very useful technical analysis there. So we do see some TA experts thinking, oh, look, it's going to go to 8K. Some people still think we have an opportunity to buy low. For me, always dollar cost average is my strategy. I feel like right now, if you want to just get to the lowest point of the lowest point, that's not really possible unless you are the one manipulating market, unless you have that much capital, maybe 100 million, 200 million to top that off right now. If you have that much capital, then sure, like you can try to manipulate, dump it all the way down and then get the lowest point. But if, you, if you're not that person, then for us, dollar cost averaging is just a much less gambling bet. You know that you can't play, if, um, you know that in the long run, the fundamentals are fine. You, you know that Bitcoin is gonna change something. And we have so much validation coming in. Yesterday, we were talking about Elon Musk. He's talking about how Bitcoin's technology is very brilliant. He's seen the disappearance of paper money. He's not extending all that way to fiat money yet, but he's seen the potential of all this. We have Jack Dorsley as well. He's really big really net deep into crypto. He's working on the Lightning Network and saying how layer two solutions are developing well. And today we have Facebook as well. So Facebook, this actually surprised me a little bit. The reason why um, it kind of surprised me, let me just find the article for you guys. And it's not, oh yeah, there you go. So this is from a NYT reporter. Facebook is seeking $1 billion in venture capital for a crypto project. So it's not really disclosed yet what this crypto project is, but a lot of people are assuming that this is Facebook coin and they're assuming a few things about it. So why don't we have official details as of yet? And it, this kind of feels a little bit like all oh, those leaks about technology, like Apple leaks or about the phone or um, whatever leaks that's coming out in the future. The, the, but there's a little bit more guts to it. The reason why is because Facebook needs to raise money. So they need to kind of present some form of information. And the thing is, they need to raise money from multiple sources. And even though there might be non-disclosure agreements, so NDAs preventing parties from disclosing it, it might be just one family or one relative or one person can leak that information to journalists. And that's what the situation was ha we're having here. So we don't have a concrete announcement that Facebook is doing this, but we have credible sources pretty much saying, yeah, they've pretty much seen a lot of what they're trying to do. They're trying to raise $1 billion. It's related to a coin that might be tied to other world currency assets. So it's not going to be a coin by itself. And this does make sense. We've seen the first go ahead by the SEC to tell us, hey, look, you know what? This coin is okay as long. Um, let, me just, let me just bring that article up here just, just so it's a little bit easier to check out. Give me one second. And welcome everyone on Twitch, by the way. Um, let's... Uh, Hey, 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 it's Astroverse. Hey, man. Hey, Nick. How's it going? Yeah, thanks for attending on, <laughs> on Twitch. Just feels like YouTube tried to ban me for talking about... Uh, we had this rumor going on. It's like, you know, um, banning for talking about Facebook coin. Maybe maybe they don't like Facebook or maybe it's in the States. Something something like that. So let's just talk about this. Um, so we had the no action letter from Turnkey. And this is kind of interesting. And this might apply to what Facebook is doing. Because Facebook, they definitely want to operate... Uh, within the law. So the, the, in, the interesting thing here is that Turnkey Jet, they had tokens that remained fixed to one US dollar. So it's not a stable coin. It's not a non-speculative coin. And this is maybe very possible that Facebook is going along that direction to make a currency that's tied to world currencies to try to kind of rough it out. It will still be fiat backed. And I think that's the only way that Facebook can do it because it has so much exposure to Americans. And you know that when you're exposed to Americans and you have invest American investors, the SEC is just on that, especially because because Facebook is such a big name as well, it will definitely be under just like 
big scrutiny from the SEC, which means that it might be very similar to these terms of this no action letter for turnkey jet, which means that token needs to be immediately useful. It means to be a fixed price, a non-speculative asset, um, could be used only for one particular service and doesn't represent tokens of having potential profit. So that might be what Facebook is doing. So a, a very much like a stable coin and raising $1 billion to do so. So this actually might actually try to replace USDT as well because we know, and we've been discussing this for a while, that USDT is not a stable ground to stand on. They hold billions of dollars, sure. Well, they, they claim they hold billions of dollars. If you look at the market cap of USDT, it holds 2.1 billion US dollars. And the issue here about USDT is that it is cool, it's mostly stable most of the time. And the issue, the, the, the reason why it's stable is because they claim they have that $2.1 billion sitting in bank accounts, but it's never been audited. They can't offer proof. Um, they don't bring auditors to say, yeah, look, let's look at these bank accounts and you have them. And one of the primary reasons here may be that banks aren't very cooperative. Maybe a lot of the bank's accounts that they hold, they don't actually tell people it's for crypto and they don't, um, they, we know that they have banking issues in the past. So Facebook can come in and do something and you know, Facebook we know has better bank accounts and if they have regulatory approval with the SEC, they might create the most epic stable coin out there trying to seat Tether. Right now, that actually means it's good for the crypto markets because right now Tether is such an unstable foundation. You know, um, it's to a point where there's new comments on my USDT video saying how good UST is. And this is very rare. We don't have these comments coming in, so it's most likely from bots. So someone from the USDT corporation from Tether is most likely hiring bots or someone to do aggressive PR to write good things about Tether. And this is why we see so many good things about Tether recently. And that's because it's a bot army. It's not an organic growth. And just go to my video and you'll see that. I see comments about it every day. Like, oh, you're spreading flood about Tether. Tether is secure. Guys, there's no such thing as secure in decentralized space. And at the end of the day, if Facebook comes into the space, it might be interesting. Um, I do actually feel that Facebook is just trying to catch on this wave of crypto. Uh, the reason here is it feels a little bit also like the JP Morgan coin, where they're trying to create a stable coin, they're figuring out how to use it in their enterprise and try not to jump on the Bitcoin wagon, when in fact the Bitcoin wagon is what makes Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is really powerful because we have a system that's away from the fiat system. So the way I see it is maybe Facebook could provide this alternative. Um, they don't have, you know, they're not as hated as JP Morgan. So I think in the community we might adopt it, although they are still not the best. Um, you know, if you look at the track record for Facebook leaking our information, selling our information, doing that. The, not the really best track record for the saviors of crypto. So I do feel in many ways, it's you know great that Mark is jumping on. He sees the value of this technology. We also see that this whole idea, he, he's taking the approach that I think probably isn't the smartest approach. If you went full on like Jack Dorsley, um, the CEO of Twitter, and went full on into Lightning and supporting Bitcoin payments onto Facebook, that would be way more exciting than what he's trying to do here. Magic, magic of raising one billion dollars. You definitely see, you know, if he can raise a billion dollars that's not from Facebook investors and he can just play around with the money, I think that's what he's going with there right now. So just catching up with the comments here. We got Astroverse saying, Twitch for the win, no lag whatsoever, very high quality. It just works, it just works. We got um, Cash Lexus, probably a ton of KYC for Facebook coin. Potentially, but if they sell it to consumers, it might just be the, for the case. If it's if it's a small amount of purchases for consumers, it might just like be purchasing like a like a Facebook, um, you know, emoji. I mean, you know, they they sell those things for one ninety nine, and maybe they want to just use it for for VAT instead. So maybe you can just charge up twenty dollars of Facebook credits and then just buy some bunch of emojis for it. Maybe that's the dumbest use case possible, but you know. That might be what's happening. I mean, if they used it, if they use parts of crypto for even privacy, we saw like you know uh, the idea of a um, 
a anonymous smart contract, you know, maybe just anonymously sharing data, that could be interesting. But Facebook, I think they took the easiest approach here, um, creating this new coin or currency. Possibly. We'll, we'll have to probably wait until the official announcement, which might be a lot later. We know the history with the Telegram coin um, a ton. Um, one thing that to know about Facebook coin or anything here is that this is most likely going straight to private investments. They don't want to avoid any, they want to avoid all the problems with the SEC. And there's a lot of problems if you sell and do a public sale for it. So what we know from Telegram is that they tried really hard to avoid the public. There was never a public offering round for the TAN token, but it was real. It was a real project and we saw the real white paper for it. And uh, this, there might be scammers, and I'm just saying this right now, there might be scammers going straight off and trying to say, oh, buy the Facebook token from this website and blah, blah, blah. That will be an absolute scam. Like unless it's on facebook.com, don't trust anything. There's a reverse Bitcoin hard fork. Every Bitcoin holder will get a gold coin. I think I had a really bad um, feeling about gold coin last time, just uh, off topic. Um, uh, people really aggressively shilling on my channel. So I, I would, yeah, not really um, go for it. It's just a me thing. That happens all the time, right? You see on crypto, a lot of people just overly aggressively shilling something. Thanks. But I'll take a look at it. I'll take it the reverse um, Bitcoin fork, but I'll just be a little bit cautious with gold coin. All right, so um, next up on the news, Coinbase, Pro, Let's EOS, Rep, MakerDAO. So interesting developments there. So I definitely want to talk about MakerDAO. I think um, in terms of MakerDAO, I haven't done many videos about it. We're talking about the DAI coin. It's a crypto-backed stable coin. And the whole system is um, very beautiful if you love crypto. The only issue that I kind of spotted here, if it's a crypto backed stable coin, is that if there's a flash crash, like what we saw when Ethereum prices dropped to almost one cent for the matter of one hour on Coinbase, um, and if that kind of like spreads throughout all the exchanges, then there is that risk that your stable coin isn't that stable. So that was my only kind of thought about it. But if it can work, you know, it still survived this current bear market. It was the first test that da the maker DAO, the DAI DAI coin, did hold its value of one peg to one US dollar and it's back backed by stable and it's run by smart contracts. So that's probably the only way. Maker DAO will probably be the only way of creating a stable coin with crypto assets that are um, not tied to any centralized system. So that's the interesting thing there. Maker DAO is a great project, sis, with um, definitely agree with you there. Like it's lots to look into, and definitely want to look into it. Now EOS as well. EOS, a lot of developments. Uh, there was a question right now from Cash Lax. Engine versus EOS. What's what's the main difference? Um, it's very big difference actually. EOS is a blockchain, so it's a protocol about. Uh, it's a way of looking at how to create blocks and how to actually function. In Engine is gaming based on Ethereum, so you know that's a project with a whole ecosystem of supporting game developers, but it uses Ethereum as the underlying protocol, and EOS is its own protocol. I think there's a lot of good things to be said about EOS as well. So EOS and Ethereum, they're kind of gone into this battle recently. Ethereum being a blockchain that anyone can join and start mining and creating blocks for, so it's very similar to the way Bitcoin works, where everyone can join. It's fully decentralized in that respect. Now EOS is a little bit different. EOS relies on 21 block producers. So only these 21 guys can produce blocks and update and control the network. So they have complete control over the network. And that's a kind of a trade-off. You're trading off decentralization, this whole idea of being able to publicly join. So it, it is a permission system. The way they kind of deal with it and say, oh, it's not fully centralized is by voting. The 21 block producers need to be voted in. And there's a little bit of politics around that, and it's very hard to kind of talk about it without stepping on people's shoes. But my general take on it is that it is another approach, and um, how much decentralization do you need? And it, that, that is the, the biggest question. If you're doing a mini game app that could, you know, um, doesn't hold that much value, do, do you really need a full decentralization, or do you, are you okay with 21 nodes? I think that's probably the biggest question and argument I want to talk about in the future, but it's good to see them get listed, and that's going to be fun. 
Um, Coinbase as well, I just wanted to add onto this. Um, Coinbase has been listing a lot of Coinbase um, coins on Coinbase Pro. There was seems to be some issue with Ethereum Classic over the weekend as well, where the prices on Coinbase Pro was much higher than everyone else. And we had this discussion yesterday on YouTube where someone actually bought a lot of Ethereum Classic during the pump um, and they lost a lot of money. Right now, Coinbase Pro, um, it's trying to get to a altcoin trading platform, but it's just not there yet. And because of the way Coinbase operates and it's such a big entity and a lot of shady stuff does go on, I've heard rumors that Coinbase is like the shadiest exchange out there. Um, can't really verify it without giving you details that are uh, a little bit too crazy, but I would be a little bit careful with Coinbase as well. Just like, and, and it goes with all exchanges. Um, just don't leave your crypto on there. Don't trust an exchange cash let says respect box mining for all the knowledge um, julius uh, crypto says do you know about polka dot i definitely know about it but um i didn't have the best kind of feeling um from from polka dot um after talking to gavin woods um, it just seems like he wasn't fully into it. So that was kind of what was keeping me back. But if you guys are interested, I'll definitely take a take a look at it. Grinder says, hello, sub box, sub man. How's it going? So yeah, so we're trying streaming on multiple platforms here. So um, all the chat should appear here. So I'm really, really excited. I'm actually really happy about the service actually. So it's pretty cool. All right, um, trying to finish this off very quickly. Um, I promised myself that I'll finish the live stream in like 30 minutes and then I spent like 30 minutes trying to fix it. So, okay, next up, SparkSwap. So SparkSwap raises $3.5 million, which is kind of crazy. Um, and it has to do with the Lightning Network. So Lightning Network we know is coming up, it's developing. Um, I've been personally using it for a while and I know it's fast. And if we can swap things instantaneously, we can do that without you know, a lot of these centralized exchanges. The reason why centralized exchanges are fast is because they can do bloop, that transaction happen, but it's all inside a black box. Assets are never really exchanged per se, but with Lightning Network, you can actually physically or you know, realistically exchange control over cryptocurrencies and you know for certainty that you have it. The issue with centralized exchanges that, well, you don't. We looked at decentralized exchanges in the past. We looked at resistance. We looked at, um, what was it? People were talking about Nash a lot. We were looking at the Binance uh, version of the decentralized exchange. So this is another one. Spark, Spark Swap is another decentralized exchange, but it uses Lightning technology, which is definitely damn exciting. Another interesting development is Western Union. So Western Union, you probably guys know, if you go to a supermarket, you can send currency around the world and they charge a little hefty fee. So what they're doing is that they are going to the Philippines um, and expanding that and using a crypto wallet. So they're cooperating with coins.ph. This is actually really exciting because we know that Southeast Asia is a great place for cryptocurrency development because of the fact that there are so many different countries and people need to send currencies between these countries. It's like kind of like the example I gave is that a lot of Filipinos, they um, have, say, their parents might be working overseas, doing um, overseas work, and they need to send money back home to the kids, and they don't want to be charged you know, $20, $30. They just want to be charged cents. And the one way you can do this, of course, is crypto. With crypto right now, even a Bitcoin transaction, it's one cent USD or Ethereum transaction. Actually, Bitcoin is probably a little bit more expensive than that. But... The idea here is that it's very cheap cross-border international payments and there's definitely a reason to use it. So this cooperation kind of is exciting. Western Union is realizing that crypto can provide something that is way more powerful than what they have and eventually we can just phase out Western Union. I think that's the biggest dream, but one step at a time. All right, next, this is a little bit upsetting. Uh, Quadrica CX, uh, very likely to enter bankruptcy with millions still missing. Guys, well, after reading and uh, um, talking to people who did actually interact with the co-founders of Quadrica CS, I had some Canadian friends who actually did like interact with them, um, shared office space with them, um, did deals with them. Not looking good, guys. Um, shady as fuck is always the response I got about Quadrica CX. Very likely 
Gary Carter and faked his own death. We saw so much evidence of the fact that they didn't even have wallets. You know, the wallets that they claimed to be missing, those storage wallets, the cold storage wallets that were meant to have millions on them. There's evidence that surfaced that there was none. These wallets were not even there. They were, they just directly sent that crypto that they were meant to store up for the customers directly into other exchanges and onto the dark web and just took that out, looked through it, cash, pocketed, gone. So very likely, Jerry Cotton faked his own death. Quadrica CX now because the consumer, the customer funds are gone. Very similar to what happened with MT Gox, people are going to lose money. An update on MT Gox as well. Um, this is kind of sad. Um, MT Gox, we just talked about how they sent the approval or disapproval for creditors. So we know this is an exchange that got wrecked all the way back in 2014. It's been five years, five years now, and uh, it's going through the legal process. No one's got any crypto from MT Gox yet. And what they're saying now is because of this legal process, it could type up people for even longer. That's messed up. And being a personal victim of MT Gox, I kind of just gave up hope. I'm just like, you know what? I, I don't feel like I'm going to get any of that money anytime this year. It's just, yeah. and I totally agree with that. It's been so long, so little communication, this long legal process procedures. This is why I'm a very big advocate of not your keys, not your crypto. Keep your own cryptocurrencies because exchanges do go down. Even if they're, you know, even if they seem reputable at a time. And everyone at that time when we we're using MT Gox, was thinking, oh, this is the biggest exchange. There's no way it can go down. And boop, boop, boop. And so learn from Quadrica CX, learn from MT Gox, keep your own cryptocurrencies. That way you have control. This is pretty interesting too. Bitcoin Core releases uh, a hardware wallet um, to connect to full nodes. So you know that when you run Bitcoin Core, if you're a hardcore like that, you have to store the private key yourself. And most of the time it's on your computer, so it's a hot wallet. So potentially hackers can get to that. Now you can use your hardware wallet soon with command line. So it's a big leap forward for the way um, security is thought up. Now it can be really very rigorous. Pretty cool. Uh, and on that note as well, Electrum faces another <laughs> fake wallet attack. That's kind of scary. Um, Electrum, from my knowledge, is one of the old school wallets for crypto. So it used to be one of the popular ones. Uh, recently, I've been seeing so much like, scary stuff about Electrum with millions of dollars stolen. You know, I, I definitely didn't recommend it. Don't use it. But be watchful. I mean, that's, that's not cool to have like millions of dollars stolen yet again. So that's my kind of news summary for today, guys. Sorry about all the technical issues. Um, it's just such a big pain when things go down. But I've learned a lot um, about uh, this whole kind of live streaming stuff. So I hope you guys um, can stay tuned for the next live stream. I'll definitely try to do Twitch more often as well. Um, so guys, if you guys haven't done so already, so subscribe to me on Twitch. So I'll just send that link up there. Twitch seems to be a little bit more stable um, for uh, live streaming on everything. Um, and of course, if you guys haven't done so already, I um, had one of the most amazing Instagram live chats yesterday. So Instagram is something that I've been trying out a lot. A, um, uh, something cool about it is it's very casual. It's just like you can just click a button, go on and just stream and even invite people onto the stream. So if you guys haven't done so already, check out Instagram.com slash box mining. Um, well, I've still got a question here. Swift20 2010 says, um, the Coinbeanie got hacked. So there was this suspicion. We saw um, funds being moved away from Coinbeanie wallets. I personally believe that if any exchange has something like crazy like that where funds get moved, we should definitely be suspicious. I know exchanges will always come out. It's it's their default policy to come out to tell us, yeah, everything's fine. And that was exactly what happened with empty Gox, where they were like, everything's fine, we didn't get hacked, but it turned out their hack just happened like <laughs> years before they went bankrupt. So just be very careful, um, not leaving money on exchanges, best practice possible. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the live stream and see you guys next time. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna update you guys on everything that's happening. See you guys soon.